Welcome to the beginning of our lesson for Algebra 2, Section 9.5. I thought as we were getting into some more of these complex fractions that we're going to be adding and subtracting to take a little look back would be helpful. So again, when we start to work problems, look at the following parts. Coefficients, do like you've been doing since you've been learning about fractions. For instance, we have here example number 1. Now I know when I have to add these, I need a common denominator, which would end up being what in this case? 12, right. Because again, if I started counting by 3's and counting by 4's, 12 would be the first number that we'd have in common. So here's what we have to do, though, to make sure that we're doing this correctly. When building our new fraction, going from 1 fourth and turning it into 12's, okay, I already have a 1 here, but what do I multiply 4 by to get to 12? Well, to multiply from 4 to get to 12, I multiply by 3. So I do the same thing up in the numerator of my new fraction. Same thing with my second fraction. As I'm working through, 3 times what is going to get me to 12? I look again. Well, I times by 4. So I do the same thing in the numerator. Therefore, now 1 times 3 is 3 over 12. 2 times 4 is 8 over 12. And I have the common denominator that I need to solve this equation. Okay, But that's like, again, old school. That's a while ago. Now we're going to start bringing in variables and quantities. Again, when you see variables that are lonely, in other words, they don't have a plus or minus bonded to them, we're going to take the largest exponent here. Quantities, when you see sets of parentheses, you take every unique set. And we'll get to that here in a couple of examples. So keep that handy on yours. So we move to our next example. I look here, I say, okay, now I have a different dilemma. I'm looking at my denominators, and I'm saying 2x and 6x squared, what's my new common denominator going to be? Well, go with the, look at the coefficients first, 2 and 6. What's the smallest number that goes into 2 and 6? Well, 6 does. Okay, so we get that written in. When we get to the variables, remember from up top when it said about our lonely variables, we're going to take the largest exponent. Well, the largest exponent I see in my x's is 2. So 6x squared ends up being my common denominator. Just like we did in our regular fractions, the 3 and the 6 are already there. But now what do I do to build from my old, excuse me, to my new? Well, 2 times what gets me to 6? 3 x times what gets me to x squared? x. So that 3x that I needed also goes up in the numerator. Because whatever I do to the denominator, I also have to do to the numerator. Well, when I look at my next one, 6x squared to 6x squared, there's nothing I need to do. So nothing gets put into my numerator. So when I go to finish, 3 times 3x is 9x minus 6. over 6x squared. And some of you may say, well, wait a minute. Can't I keep going on this? And to you I say, good job. I look at this and I say, hey, I can factor out a 3 from this, which would leave me 3x, since 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 over 6x squared. Now, if what we were doing in 9, 4 has clicked for you or not, is there anything else I can do? I'll wait here a minute for you to think about it. What's normally the answer when I ask this question? Yeah, there's something else I can do. Well, what is it? Out here, again, I cannot cancel what's in parentheses. There's a wall built here for a reason. I can only cancel if I have something that's identical to this. But these guys are free to work with. So here, 3 goes into 6 twice and I can end up getting my solution for this one, which ends up being 3x minus 2 all over 2x squared. And again, no canceling here. I'm done with that. This is a little more towards what we're going to be doing in this section. So if I flip over and I look at the next part, pardon me, I run into the same thing again. I say, okay, as I look through these, I'm looking at my three denominators. 
I need to do several things here. I need to check and say, okay, look at my coefficients, 2, 4, and 5. What's the smallest multiple that they will all have in common? 20. And again, whether I count by 2s, 4s, and 5s until I see that or not, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put 20 in there for those. Smallest number that 2, 4, and 5 would divide into would be another way to look at it. Okay, look again at my exponent terms. We remember with the lonely variables, we take the largest exponent. So my common denominator ends up being 20x squared. Whatever's in your numerator is there already to begin with. And now we go back into our game of what do I do to get from my old to my new denominator? Well, 5 times 4 is 20, and I need the x squared. So whatever that is, that goes up here. And again, you don't have to draw this out this way, but to me it just lets you see this a little more visually. Okay, 2x squared to get to 20x squared. 2 times what gets me to 20 is 10, and I already have the x squared. So that's good to go. One last one. 4x to get to 20x squared. 4 times 5 gets me to 20, to get from x to x squared, I need another x. So you look at this and you say, okay, so now 20x squared is my denominator. And what else do I have? Well, 4x squared times x is 4x to the third. 7 times 10 is 70. And 5 times 5x is 25x, but that's minus. And at this point, I look at this and say, well, is there anything else I can do? I look through, maybe I want to rewrite it from greatest degree down to least, so I have it in standard form. Maybe that lets me see something that I may not have seen before. I see bonds here. Not all my terms have an x. That doesn't work. Not all my terms are divisible by the same number, not even two this time. So that actually ends up being my final answer. Because again, with the pluses and minuses, those are bonded. Unless I could factor this using slide and divide or whatever method you use, or I had a greatest common factor I could pull out, I can't cancel individual pieces in there. So that one happens to be done. So as I slide my way up here to the next one, Now we run into a dilemma we haven't seen before. When I'm looking at my denominators, if you can factor it, you need to do that before you even start. So for instance here, I see a difference of squares. This is actually x minus 3, x plus 3. Okay, so I'll cross that out because that's now gone. And now I can go looking for my common denominator. Remember, and this is the first time we've been dealing with quantities or parentheses. Every unique set of parentheses needs to be included in my LCD. So I see x minus 3. I see x plus 3. And I don't see any other unique ones. If you see the same one repeated, we don't want it more than once. So that's going to be my common denominator. I'll go ahead, rewrite in what I already have. And here we go again. Now when I'm doing these, here's the way I like to look at it. Here's my two fractions. Okay, I already have the x minus 3. I already have the x plus 3. So I don't need anything more in this first one. That one's done. However, when I move to my second set, okay, here's my old fraction. Here's my new one. I have the x minus 3. Ooh, but I don't have an x plus 3. Whatever I don't check off, I need to put in the numerator of my new fraction. And now we're ready to work this out. So we've got x minus 3, x plus 3 in the denominator. Here, if I do some distributing, nothing in the first one. Here I'd have 4x plus 12, because 4 times x is 4x, 4 times 3 is 12. So I take a little bit closer of a look and I say, okay, I can combine like terms. 6x and 4x. I'm just adding here. I'm no longer multiplying. 1 plus 12 is 13. 
These are bonded, nothing's the same, I'm done. Sometimes you'll be able to cancel, a lot of times you won't, so don't think automatically, ooh, I've gotta do something here, that's the only way this is gonna work. Okay. And finally, we get to our last example. Ooh, factoring for both of these. The diamond, if you want to do the diamond, but again, remember, we're just multiplying to get the number on the end and adding to get the number in the middle. I think that's something we can probably do in our heads. If not, though, again, go to the diamond. And once you've factored a denominator, go ahead and cross the old one out just so you don't want to go back and use it for something. Negative 2 and 1. So what is my new denominator going to be? Remember, unique quantities, unique sets of parentheses. So we need an x minus 4. We need an x plus 1. We need an x minus 2. Wowzers. But I already have the x plus 1, so I don't need to take another one. So that one's done. I already got my 5, I already got my 3. So now again, old fraction, new fraction. What do I have? I have the x plus, excuse me, the x minus 4. I have the x plus 1, but I don't have an x minus 2. So I'll add that in. Here, I've got an x minus 2. I have an x plus 1. But I'm missing the x minus 4. So I put that up here. So all I have left to do now, keep my denominator. It's not going to change anymore. And I've got distributing to do up here. So I got 5x minus 10. And this minus goes with my 3. So that's like negative 3 times x and negative 3 times negative 4. And again, now it's just combining like terms and simplifying to see if we can do anything. So 5 minus 3 is 2. Negative 10 plus 12 is positive 2 over all that stuff. You're like, dang, Hardy, there's a lot to this. And the shocking thing is we're not quite done here yet. What can I still do? Take a 2 out. So if I take a 2 out and factor what's left, I know we're running out of room. Luckily, we only got one thing left to do, so I'm done now, right? Not so fast. Take a look here for a second. I can still whack those x plus 1s, and what I'm left with is 2 over x minus 4 x minus 2. Now we're done. And again, this is basically going to be a lot of the types that you see on your homework. If you're still running into something else that's different though, that's something you've got to kind of work out like we've been doing here. Not everything's always the same. So good luck with this and if you have any other issues, let me know.